welcome to the Deeper Podcast. Now join our host, Chris Standridge, along with pastor and author, Dave Vance. Welcome back, everybody. Today on the episode, we are going to be talking about a topic that is no doubt familiar to everyone and will apply to everyone. Uh, As we continue our Can I Speak with the Manager series, today we're going to be talking about technology and how we are to be good stewards of it. My name is Chris Standridge. I'm the community's pastor at Crossroads Church in Mansfield, and next to me is Pastor Dave Vance, and this is The Deeper Podcast. So, Let's get to it. Let's Let's get at it. Let's do it. So the fact is is that no matter how old you are, Dave, um, we all grew up with some sort of new cutting edge technology. Um, My favorite favorite technology when I was a kid, uh, and I'm going to ask you what yours was as well, but mine was the little handheld Coleco electronic quarterback game. Oh, yes. I I, I love that one. Man, it was just like the days before Game Boys and all these like uh, personal cell phones where you could play games on them and everything. It was just this little handheld device had a little red dot or a dash and you just controlled it (laughs) up and down and left and right and that was it. That and, um, man... The, the the original Nintendo was just classic. The eight bit. Ah, yeah, you just took mine. That, yeah. That's it. That was the most amazing things. And the game of the century of the lifetime was Mike Tyson's Punch, Punch Out. Out. Oh, yeah. so I actually have a Nintendo, and mm-hmm. uh, we actually have one of those games loaded also on a computer. I love that game. Uh, oh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out all the way, <laughs> all the way. I um, I, yeah, I used to play the Nintendo. I was a big Contra. Oh yeah, Contra up, up, down, down, left, right, left, yeah, right. Yeah. A B B A select start. I remember that. That was the code. still remember the cheat codes <laughs> after all these years. That's that's fantastic. Hey, do you remember Nintendo? And if you had a Nintendo, you remember this, where your game would get stuck and you had to pull it out and you have to blow oh, in the yeah. back, blow in the cartridge. And I mean, that was technology. That yeah. was technology at its finest. Yeah. Uh, we had to, you know, young people, you're listening to this and uh, watching this, and you had to blow in the back to clear it. And then when you put it in, you had to sometimes put it right at the edge <laughs> and push it down. Yeah. Oh, it was awesome. I'm not going to lie. Every once in a while when my phone trips out on me, I'll just be like, <laughs> <laughs> just like we did just with like the, the old Nintendo, Nintendo cartridges. Oh. So good. Well, we've been talking about technology this week, and man, it blows my mind how most of us kind of aimlessly wandered into this wilderness of technology. And it seems like, you know, 30 years ago or so, our lives were kind of changed forever. And we really didn't see it coming um, with the emergence of the internet and how that has really changed technology over the last two to three decades. And we weren't prepared for it. And it almost in some ways, Dave, it feels like we live in like this technological wild west you know over the last 20 years there was so much advancement there were so many new things coming onto the market with you know the internet with cell phones and all of these new things that we just kind of were like social media we just kind of decided like anything's fair game that's right and it's kind of turned into the wild west and i wonder at times I've, i've often thought this as a former youth pastor i've often wondered if as parents we will look back in like 20 or 30 years and think what were we thinking yeah. when we let our kids do this or have that um and i guess i've probably already thought that like yeah. Yeah. So, so i want to ask you as, as 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 i throw that statement out there have you ever had um that thought about technology in the last maybe 20 years where you're like what was i thinking when i bought that or allowed that um uh, yeah, I've had multiple moments like that, and you're so right. The Wild Wild West, it is like a gold rush. Mm-hmm. It is a gold rush to advancement. Um, what's next? Um, where is it going to come from? What place has the gold? Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a gold rush happening. And a couple of things that I look back on and regret, one of them was uh, I think when I started on social media, I, I kind of wish I would have thought more about the purpose behind social media. Yeah. And I would say, you know, I try to use my social media for the for the uh, good of family, you know, be able to talk about my family, talk about um, kind of how God is at work in my yeah. family. I also use it to try to encourage the saints yeah. um, or, or try to, to make people think a little bit differently. But I, I don't know if I really counted the cost of social media. Um, and as social media has progressed, um, I, I then look at my own sons, and I know they may hate hearing this, but I wonder if 
you know, what was the right? We were very cautious as to when we allowed certain things, and we were heavy-handed on being able to see it, observe it, and keep them accountable to it. Um, but I look back, and once you start to hit that button, there was no turning back. Yeah. Like once we said yes to this social media or yes to this object, the phone, there was no turning back from it. And yeah. so sometimes I, I wonder, did we do too soon? Mm -hmm. um, and I would say we were late compared to most parents. Right. Uh, did we? Did what other boundaries could we have in place? Was that social media thing right? Mm -hmm. um, and I would say, you know, looking back, that that's the one thing. Uh, some of the boundaries we have today, I wish I would have instilled in the beginning. Right. And I had to learn a little bit the hard way of saying, oh, that's probably not good yeah. for you to be on or mm -hmm. for you to have, have that access or conversation. Yeah. I'm pulling it back now. And yeah. I wish I would have done that in the beginning. And I think if even even my boys would agree, like probably that would have been good. Yeah. yeah. So How about as, you? as yeah. a dad of three girls, yeah. uh, we've yeah. had those conversations as well because two of them now have cell phones. And, you know, one just turned 18 and she's an adult now. And we have not allowed them to have any form of social media. Like the only social media that they have is the Uversion app where they can keep up with their friends and what Bible verses they're reading and stuff. And so at times we've often wondered like, man, are we too strict? I know that we're kind of going against the culture and I know that a lot of their friends and their peers have social media, but we've just decided as young ladies, we've seen the effects of social media that it has sometimes on teenage girls. And we just decided to, to kind of hold out. And, and, um, I even texted my girl during the sermon on Sunday when you were talking about social media I'm like see don't get it you don't need it because there's definitely a part of me I know you mentioned social media for me the multiple forms of social media was really the one like it started out with MySpace years ago and that quickly kind of evolved into yeah. Facebook and then that turned into you know into Twitter and then it turned into Instagram and then it turned into Snapchat and then it turned into TikTok all these things and I just realized after about three different platforms, like I don't need all of this. Right, right. And so I decided to delete like my Twitter and my Instagram account because it just was taking up too much of my time. And it took me years and years um, to realize I am probably investing way too much time in this. Right, right. So that was kind of a big regret for me is that not only did I not necessarily just start social media, but I allowed all these different platforms to come in and just really start taking up, yeah. taking, up taking up my time. But you know, the reality is, is that there's no going back. You right, know, I, right. you and I, we both remember life before, you know, social media. We remember life before phones in our pockets. We remember life before we were caught up in all of this information and all of the great things that technology actually can bring. And our kids don't remember those lives whatsoever. And I think that sometimes those of us who are in our maybe mid to late thirties and, and even beyond, we remember that life and we yearn for like simpler times. Right. We yearn for those days where we didn't have to worry about what our kids were seeing or what we were being constantly inundated with. But the fact of the matter is, is that the world is moving forward yes, and there's yeah. no going back. And, um, you know, it's kind of full blast into the future. And so as Christians, we have to learn how to navigate this world yeah. and not expect that we're going to just say at some point, OK, cut off no more new technology. We will always have to evolve into new technology. So we have to learn how to navigate the world so that these good things don't become God things. So I want you, cause I know you did some research for your sermon. I'd love for you to share some of the statistics and some of the findings that you found regarding how social media has impacted us over the last, you know, a uh, couple of decades. Yeah. And there, there's a lot of, um, a, a lot of information out there. I know, you know, you go back to 1993. So if you're in your late twenties, early thirties, um, there was no internet. Um, there, there was, there was, there was no internet available yeah. and before that, and then internet became available, and the internet had like a few websites. Right. You know, let's say 600 websites in the entire universe, and now there are billions of, yeah. of you know, you go through that progression. A couple of things that I think is interesting: 2004, 45 uh, percent of those 40 and below had a cell phone. Uh, now, 98 percent do. <laughs> right. So. 2004, we're not going that far back. Yeah. 
majority of the people, less than half of those 40 and below didn't have a cell phone or, or did have a cell phone. And that means more than half yeah. didn't. Uh, now 98% do. Um, you go down the line to even the older generation, 75% um, of baby boomers have a smartphone. 88% um, of them have found them advantageous during the COVID-19 pandemic. And that's only 3% less than uh, the younger generation. Uh, a stat I found was that 25% of baby boomers play video games. <laughs> that surprised me. That's a quarter of it's, them. It's, yeah. it's a quarter of them. And, uh, you know, people looking at their inst you know, Instagram or, or social media constantly. How about this? Uh, cybersecurity company Lookout did a study on mobile mindset, and they found that 80% of people check their social media constantly. 80% yeah. are checking constantly, yeah. and 68% don't go an hour without at least looking at their phones. Yeah. So we're checking you know, our, our social media constantly, and, and yet what we find as a result of that is a less connected and more depressed culture. In fact, uh, CBS did a, an article uh, by Cigna. They posted it, and it said less than half of Americans say they have meaningful social interactions on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So that means we are more connected than ever, and yet we have less social, yeah. meaningful relationships. So what we find is a, a, a rise of, of connection, uh, but really a decline of true, deep, meaningful yeah. relationships. And I would mm -hmm. dare say uh, a decline in reflection. Right. We no longer reflect where we're at in life. And so we don't see life well. Uh, we don't see what's happening well. And we really are in an at a place where the environment is changing, uh, we have to change, adapt, or die. Yeah, yeah. I want you to, if you could, pull up First um, Corinthians chapter ten. Yeah. I want. I know you use this as your your main text for your message on Sunday, verses twenty three and twenty four. Yeah. I was going to see if you would take a moment and just read um, as you tear your pages apart. <laughs> <laughs> um, read verses twenty three and twenty four, and I want to ask the question, and I'll let you kind of run with it. But how can you explain the context of these verses that you're about to read, and how they apply to the modern age or the modern uh, way of living in regards to technology. Yeah, so it's important to understand the context. And, and I really do believe, you know, God, outside of time, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, through the human authors, wrote the Bible for us today. And I think it's real important to realize it wasn't just for them. It connects to us today. The context might be different, but the truth is is the same. And I think it's real important to understand that so that when we read these things, the ancient scriptures really do apply to modern phenomena. And so we can apply what the scriptures says today in our lives. It might not be at the same, you know, foundation or the same purpose, but it still fits. So for example, in 1 Corinthians 10, uh, the context is, you know, Corinth is a church that's in shambles. They're divided. And one of the things that they're divided over is the concept of are we allowed to eat meat that is offered to idols? Mm -hmm. And so in their day, if you want to worship a Roman god, you would uh, go to a temple, and there you would offer a sacrifice. It could be a, a cow, a, a calf, a lamb, a goat, and you would offer the sacrifice, and that would basically be, be a blood sacrifice. That meat that would be from that animal would then be sold for a discount price at the market. And for many Christians who were poor, uh, they would then go buy that meat. And so the question was, are they allowed to eat meat offered to idols or not? Mm -hmm. And some were saying, absolutely not. Some were saying, yes. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about social media for our, our technology. Are we able to embrace it or do, should we deny it? That's the question. Same mm -hmm. kind of a question, different foundation of it. And so Paul writes to them and says, hey, don't, don't be idolaters. And he says, don't make anything ultimate. Don't be like the Israelites back in the day who saw God deliver them from the Red Sea, from Egypt, uh, across to the dry land of the Red Sea, into the wilderness, providing along the way and ultimately into the promised land, but still made trinkets that they worshiped. Don't make meat your idol. Don't make technology your idol. Mm -hmm. And then he writes this. He says, Verse 23, all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. Is it right to eat meat offered idols? Sure. There's no law against that. But it might not be helpful. All things, um, all things are lawful, but not all things build up. Does it actually edify? Does it build up? Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. And so the question we have to ask when it comes to technology is, just because it's lawful 
doesn't mean it's good. Just mm-hmm. because it's allowed doesn't mean it's actually being used to be to be something that's building up yeah. or to edify. And then he responds and says, verse 24, don't seek your own good. So mm-hmm. think about our technology. It's really all about us, right? Mm-hmm. It is made to make our lives easier. It's made to help us enjoy life more. What is it based upon? Itself. And so we do well to filter this. The same verse really relates to technology in yeah. that way. Is it about building ourselves up? Is it just that we're allowed to do it? Or is it truly helpful and edifying? And yeah. then the question is, can it be used that way? Yeah. So you had mentioned you had mentioned that like all things in, in, in the way of technology, all things are lawful, but not all things are necessarily beneficial. I'm going to throw a uh, kind of an impromptu question at you. Is there some sort of technology in your life that that you have refused to adapt or you've refused to accept or purchase just because you feel like it's okay to have it. I've just decided it's not going to be beneficial for me. That's interesting. I, I, you know, I, I'm trying to think of any, uh, any direct technology that I, you know, I, I, I feel like most technology, the question is boundaries with them. And Mm -hmm. that to me is the bigger question is what boundaries will you have? Because there's so much technology out there. Like I am not to the point of, of, of buying a self-driving car. Yeah. Um, but it's not because I think the technology is wrong. I just am not there yet. Um, I, you know, I have an Apple watch. Um, I feel like they're a waste of money in my personal opinion. (laughs) I don't be, I'm not, some people use the the fullest extent of it. I don't. Um, but for me, it's not necessarily about a, a, a technology we buy. It's about how we use it. So, mm-hmm. for example, social media has been a, a thing for me that I've wondered, is there a time of season to, to, to turn it off? And there, we'll talk about that probably yeah. in a moment. But I think it's, it's, that's probably for me the bigger crux is what level of social media do I want and right. not. So, right. like, I'm not on TikTok, um, although, you know, again, it's not wrong. Uh, is it helpful? You know, I look at, things like iPads and iPhones, you know, you have Bible apps and devotional guides, you know, what line is it right? And so I wrestle with that, yeah. but there hasn't been one that I said, I'm not going to buy because mm-hmm. it's tech, you know, of the technology. It's more so what boundary do will I have, have in place and is it really going to be able yeah. to be helpful? So yeah. I've been able to filter through the discipline of that question. Is it going to be helpful? And is it going to edify? Is it going to edify my own life? Is it going to make my life truly easier? Uh, or is it going to help build up the body of Christ? Yeah. And the gospel. Yeah, and there are obviously some inherent dangers that come with different types of technology that you talked about on Sunday. In fact, I would say as a pastor, you hit your alliteration stride on Sunday because (laughs) you gave four D words that go along with the dangers that can come with technology. Do you want to share just maybe a couple of those and hit some highlights there? Yeah, so a couple dangers. I mean, technology has a lot of dangers. One of them is that it's distraction. Um, And by the way, we all feel this, don't we? Like it is a distraction to us. We, We check it a lot. Um, the distraction is we can find life outside or validation outside of yeah. human interaction. And so there's some distraction to life. By the way, every addiction begins with a bit of distraction. When you think of any addiction, let's take a t- technology away, but let's think about uh, drinking or smoking or uh, pornography. It really begins because we feel a pain, a numbness in life, and we want something to bring us uh, a different feeling. We want to numb the discomfort. We want to numb the pain. Um, we want to numb something that we feel in life or we're not feeling in life. So what do we do? We turn to addictions. Technology is the same way. It is a distraction to the reality, reality of life. And uh, we probably all have been there where um, we're in a crowd and everybody has their cell phone. And what do we do? Yeah. We feel like I got to pull mine out. Yeah. Why? Because we feel this distraction. Like I feel value and validation in the midst of it. So Distraction is one of them. I think another one is disconnectedness. Um, I, I know in your world of communities, we talk about being a part of a mm-hmm. small group. Um, technology can actually disconnect us. Yeah. It connects us, but can actually disconnect us. I mean, we see the, the rise of depression and anxiety. Um, by the way, we can go on Facebook, and it's a safe, sanitized room where we can watch the ups and downs of others as a anonymous spectator right. and do nothing about it, feel no impulse to come alongside of them, to help them, to encourage them. Um, we no longer have flesh and blood connection. We have social media connection. And, uh, you know, I know I talked briefly about that we can have, we have community without commitment. Right. And if you have community without commitment, it's not community. Right. It's, it's merely just 
uh, it's just knowing about someone without being involved in their lives, without being flesh and blood connected. By the way, well, I I would just say to that as well, as a youth pastor, again, for years and years, I took teenagers to camp every summer. And every year I would tell the kids, because it was a five-hour road trip, I'd let them take their phones on the vans and whatnot just for the road trip. But I said, once we get to camp, you're leaving your cell phones with me or you're leaving them in your luggage and you're not allowed to have them all week long unless unless it's an absolute emergency and every year i would get teenagers that just thought that we were you know (laughs) kicking their dog or something like that (laughs) or beating up on them i don't even know but they would just act as if it was the worst thing in the world and what we would find is by the end of the week they would come out of camp saying I'm so glad I got a chance to put the technology away. I'm so glad I got a chance to have these conversations with my friends that otherwise I wouldn't have yeah, had. Yeah. Like they they experience deep connection that they're not really used to because every day of their life their their hands are you know, around their phone, their hands, you know, their eyes are buried in yeah. their phones yeah. um, to some degree. And so when they didn't have that, they realized how, like how life-giving it actually could be to find genuine and intimate connection with yeah. their friends. Yeah. So, yeah. So disconnect is certainly one of them. Mm-hmm. Interesting study that was done with, uh, they used teenagers calling their grandma to tell them the grandma, they weren't coming to dinner. They did a study on this and they found that the, the, the teenagers who called grandma over the phone and had to talk with them had a harder time saying no to dinner than those who text. Yeah. And it was this idea of connection. Yeah. You know, the idea you're looking at somebody and you're feeling what they feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the last one I'd give is deception. And deception and division, I think we put together, right? We can be deceived by technology. Technology gives us this idea that we can be in the know of everything. Um, so we can be deceived by it, but we also divide division. I mean, there is division. Look at our culture today. There is a divided culture, and social media and technology has a lot to do with it. From videos, some of them that are true and right, some of them that are reactionary, some that are edited. Mm-hmm. I mean, you think about the technology we have now. We can edit things uh, that make things look certain ways. And so we have to then go to Snopes and see, is it real or not? Um, so we can be deceived and that has created division among our culture. Yeah. So those are the dangers there. And we can go into depth in all of them. There could be books written right. on each of them. Yeah. First Corinthians ten thirty one through 33, which you read, um, in your sermon on Sunday, Paul was saying this, he was saying, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God, give no offense to Jews or to Greeks or to to the church of God, just as I try to please every everyone and everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many, they may be saved. So in regards to how it applies to these verses, how should we evaluate if our usage of technology is actually glorifying God or if it's destructive? Yeah. So here's a little here's a little equation that I think is helpful. And I think we should consider this when we're thinking of technology. And and the equation goes like this, the amount of time plus the type of content plus the intended purpose. Mm -hmm. And I might even flip that if I could a bit to say, what is my intended purpose? What is the amount of time I'm giving? Plus what is the type of content I'm going to use? It will demonstrate to us whether we're being constructive. So in 1 Corinthians 10, 23 and 24, is it to build up and edify or is it actually going to be destructive Mm -hmm. or deconstructive? So constructive or deconstructive. So uh, again, the question, what is my purpose, intended purpose? What is the amount of time I'm going to spend? And what is the content I'm going to use? Mm -hmm. And I think if we do that, we're going to be able to evaluate, is this going to help build up or is it not? Um, So, for example, social media, am I going to use it to bring God glory? Is my purpose only to satisfy a need that I have in myself? Is the purpose only to connect with people maybe in my family? Uh, Again, that's not wrong. Um, Is it meant to build up the body of Christ and to proclaim the gospel? And that's what Paul gets at is whatever you do. And I, I love that. Whatever. And he could be speaking about technology here and it would relate. Whatever you do, technology, do all technology communication, what we post, what we read, games we play, whatever we do, do all to the glory of God. And does that, does that mean we can't sit down and veg and scroll through people's lives? No, no, no. I think there are times and places for that. 
But the point of it is that we're thinking about the glory of God in the time we're spending doing that. Like, is this time actually beneficial to be constructive? If I'm looking through people's you know, po- social media posts and I'm I'm thinking about how I can encourage them or how I can pray for them, yeah. now we're changing the game a little mm-hmm. bit, all to the glory of God. And he says, so that I can do everything I can that some may be saved. And that's the ultimate purpose is gospel. And mm-hmm. I think that's the heart of this is looking at this from a gospel perspective. You know, many people want next steps. And again, this is an area where we're just figuring things out. I mean, the level of technology that we have in the last 20 to 30 years is so far advanced compared to the last hundred years or thousand years. And so we're all really trying to figure this out. And so for some of us, we really need some practical next steps. And I know that you offered some of those in your sermon on Sunday. I was wondering if you could give our viewers, if you give them some maybe next steps as we close this out, like some action steps yeah, yeah. that they can like, um, that they can actually deliver upon. Yeah. So first of all, I think deliberately and consistently evaluate your use of technology how are you doing? And I think that's the question of, am I looking for validation or am I really sh- diving into my salvation? Am I, di- am I growing in my faith? I think that we do well to say, I need time to evaluate technology. And that means sometimes I have to turn off technology right. to evaluate it. And so mm-hmm. I think sitting down and reflecting, and remember, remember one of the dangers is, and we said this at the beginning, is that the increase connection, not deep connection, but connection, has caused decreased reflection. I think we do well to reflect. How am I doing? Am I am I constantly on my phone? Am I constantly on on my computer? Am I constantly on video games? Am I constantly on things? We need to reflect that and t- think about that. We need to consider it and and actually do it consistently mm-hmm. um, and deliberately. Secondly, disconnect your devices. And a, a book that I recommend to everybody by Andy Crouch called uh, The Tech Wise Family. Mm-hmm. Great book. And he talks about picking one hour a day, one day a week, and one, uh, one, I'm sorry, yeah, one day a week and one, one week, week a, a year, year. Mm-hmm. of just shutting it down. So one hour a day where you just say my, my phone, and I used to put my phone in a basket. I have a, uh, now on my nightstand, a place where I can put my phone, I have a basket, I put my phone, and just when I get home, I put my phone down. I try to put it mm-hmm. away. I, I try not to engage it. Uh, sometimes I have to, sometimes I do, but, but I try to pick a time where it's just going to be unplugged one day a week um one hour a day one day a week so one day a week maybe it's more my sabbath day if you have a day off on monday or a day off on saturday where you just say you know what i'm gonna put my phone away and i'm not gonna answer things i'm not gonna answer emails they'll be there the next day Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe it's on sunday when you're worshiping and then one week a year where you just say i'm fasting from technology i'm not using it um and i would encourage you to look at times like to disconnect disconnect when you're eating dinner together Mm -hmm. disconnect when you're doing an event together um Turn it off when you're spending time with family and friends. Uh, don't take it to church with you. Yeah. I mean, that would be a feat. Um, when you're doing your devotions, I know I use technology when I do my devotions, but uh, turn off every notification. Uh, take some time to regularly disconnect your device. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, if I can add this, I would make sure not to look at it the first thing when you wake up and the last thing you do when you go to bed. Mm-hmm. Like, don't, you know, it's one, th- I know I like to watch the news before I go to bed or mm-hmm. watch a sports thing, um, but I, my phone is off. I don't want to see it. I'm afraid I'm going to get a notification and then yeah. I'm going to be worried about the rest of the night. So turn it off. Don't look at it first thing. Uh, let it be an afterthought. Spend that moment mm-hmm. just maybe with the Lord. Um, thirdly, pursue consistent accountability. Uh, studies have showed 70% of Christians in a survey said no one else knew about how much time they spent online. Yeah. And I think we do well to have accountability, have an accountability partner that you can talk about your technology with. Uh, then fourthly, choose to be present in the moment. Don't miss the divine moments in front of you. I think we miss gospel yeah. moments where people are actually crying out for us because we're too busy on our phones mm-hmm. or we're too busy on technology. It could be in the office. It could be at home. It could be in the supermarket. Instead of being on, on technology, stop and say, God, give me ears to listen and hear. Um, and then lastly, figure out how to use technology for God's glory. Like, what are you posting? What are you looking at? Um, are you just engrossed in information that's going to divide? It's going to create opinions. 
or are you really thinking about how I can pray for people? And I think if I imagine if Christians, if if we realize how to use social media for God's glory, I think it could be the marker of what Christianity looks like in the future. Yeah. If technology is not going to yeah. slow down, you and I have to become wiser with our technology and we have to realize how to bring glory to God. And I just want to encourage you, don't fill your life with digital hunger, but fill it with delight in Jesus Christ. That's the answer. Yep. Yep. Man, those are all really good practical steps. My guess is, is that for every one of you watching, this impacts you on some level because you're watching right now on technology. And so the challenge for some people watching on YouTube right now might be not to do that deep dive into the next video or not to go down that rabbit hole of all of the different video suggestions. But we are so glad that you tuned in with us this week. Uh, we want to invite you back again next week um, as we bring another podcast. Dave, thanks for taking us deeper this week. Appreciate oh, thank it. You. Appreciate it. All right, everybody. We'll see you next week. And until then, keep digging deeper. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Deeper Podcast. To listen to more content or get more info, visit CrossroadsWired.com or PastorDaveVance.com.